you are a person of many lives, if I can say, and people already could, your name could be familiar to many outside there. And today, other than what they could, the few things they could be knowing you about, would like you to take people down to who actually Alan Sewanyana Aloysius is. I was born in 1986, 26th of November, uh, to a man called Sendaula Aloysius and uh, his wife, uh, Sarah Sendaula of Kiwie, Makindi Division. Uh, that's where I was, I was born from. I started my primary school from Nachivu Blue Primary School, just mm -hmm. near here in Kampala Central. Uh, and uh, from there, I joined uh, St. Matthias Kalemba for my O levels. Mm -hmm. St. Kalemba is in Nazigo, Kayunga District. Then it was Mukono mm -hmm. District. And from there, I joined mm -hmm. Menge SS as a student for my A levels. I took arts as my combination. Then I joined Makay University uh, for my bachelor's degree in human resource management. Mm -hmm. So you are typically a city born. Yeah. Tell us about your childhood. How was it? Of course, as a child, we used to, to have very many challenges because growing up from ghettos here, mm -hmm. it is not very good. Growing up from a poor family, uh, you lack so many things and sometimes you try to force yourself into a life which you are not uh, born into. We were very, we admired so many people who were successful, at least around us, those who had some money, those who, had, who, can, who could afford a very good meal. Because as a child, uh, we never enjoyed such. Uh, sometimes we could eat sup, uh, lunch, sometimes we could not. We could take one meal per day. Uh, those are the days. Mm -hmm. And my, my parents were not so rich because they, they were busy. Poor people, those whom you called Mufuna and Pola mm. in our language, they used to, 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 to work from Oino Market, mm. both of them. Uh, one, my mother was serving tea in that market to various vendors, and my father was a, a trader who had a small store around himself, could sell old clothes. Mm. And from there, we started life as a child. Your parents today, are they still engaged in the same business or life changed? Yeah, of course, uh, as they grew up, they also developed somewhere, somehow, by God's grace. Mm. They improved on their business, and uh, they now have some shops in, in Kampala. They do business, but not in Uino Market as of now. How but many now siblings we... do you have, and are you the eldest? Yes, I'm the firstborn of seven uh, siblings. Mm -hmm. uh, so I grew up wanting myself to be the example, a good example for these young children mm -hmm. who are following me. We had challenges around our community. Uh, as a ghetto child, you know, those challenges. People do smoke, uh, ganja, people do engage in various uh, petty petty habits like uh, stealing people's things, pickpocketing around and it was too much around Chiwuye, Katwe and those areas of Lukuli where I grew up from. How did you manage to avoid matters. ending up into such yourself? Because if you're in such a community, probably you'd have been taken up by also the same. I had a very strict father and mother who could punish me wherever I could go wrong. They could beat me, they could do certain, very many things that could scare me around. In school, you were a leader. Yes. And of course, uh, related to sports uh, field. Mm. How did you start this ambition? What inspired you? I started contending for leadership positions in my primary school at Nachivo Blue Primary. Mm. Being a member of the national football team, uh, the, the school team, football team, I thought I could also lead sports as a whole in the, in the school. I stood up uh, for the post of a sports prefect and I was given mm. in Nachivo Blue Primary. The privileges, small, a few or small as they were, inspired me to continue with my leadership ambitions because as a sports prefect, I could not line up for food. Uh, I could even come late for school and I was late inside the school leaving other pupils at the gate, no big punishments by then, and even commanding other students. So it was very, 
it, I enjoyed it very well, and uh, that inspired me to continue with my political ambitions. And then when I joined the uh, all level, first I became a classroom leader. Mm. Uh, that was the best position one could get in senior one. Then in senior two, I again contended for being the assistant sports prefect lower class. Mm. And I was given because I was playing football very well at school. And I could talk about football as if it was my hobby. And I enjoyed it with the passion. So people saw something in me in regard to sports and they gave me that assistant sports prefect. Mm. And uh, I continued my level. I joined the Menge SS and I contended for being the top uh, head prefect of that school. Contesting for political position now in the villages requires some money, mm. just as it would be maybe at the universities, not mm. like at school. Mm. So what gave you that confidence yeah. that you could still contest and maybe even win? After my senior six uh, examinations in the vacation, I joined one of the media uh, companies in this country uh, mm. that helped me, giving me some money, uh, giving me some form of salary here and there. So I had some money with me mm -hmm. because uh, during my level, I tried to play football in the National Super League for Top Radio, uh, for Top TV FC, mm -hmm. managed by Top Radio owners. So as a young man, I was liked by the directors at, at a level uh, during my vacation. And by that time, they had started up, a very, the, the radio station had grown, and then they decided to give me to be an analyst mm. for their sports programs, mm. because I had a history with them as mm. a younger man. Mm. They gave me that chance, and I started working with them. So by the time I joined the university, I had a small job which could give me some money. In terms of employment, you never hustled like other people do? Of course I hustled, because my, my very big picture was getting a very big job in one of the banks in this country as a human resource manager or one of the companies in this country. But of course, uh, being in, in journalism, it is a very good job which gives you uh, limelight. But of course, getting finances is, a very, uh, is very, very, very hard mm -hmm. as regarding to the standard of living of this country and the picture that people depict mm -hmm. over us because we, we get names <laughs> which are not equal at least 50 percent of what we take in our pockets so you know your love for sports mm -hmm. somebody would say at university possibly you should have even pursued a degree maybe in education or the sports field mm -hmm. but somehow you end up in a human re resource yes how comes yeah, by that time there was a no course related to sports. Uh, by the time we, we sat for A level and the time we joined the university, these uh, sports related courses are just, uh, just coming in mm -hmm. as of now as the world changes to um, seeing sports as a business. But having joined the media at an early age, uh, you could have certainly also pursued the career of journalism professionally, mm -hmm. going for it, but you did not take that route. No, I didn't take that route as a profession, but of course I took some few or three courses, small, small, four, six months courses mm -hmm. uh, that I took at MDI, and uh, those I couldn't call them my careers, because I have a bachelor's in another field, mm -hmm. so I couldn't tell them to you in, their, in our introduction, but I took them. Because by that time I thought, this is the career I'm, no, I'm now going to take. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the time I took them, I had started enjoying media as a person. Mm -hmm. It had put my name up. I was a very big person, uh, much as financially by that time I wasn't very big. But at least by that time I could enjoy life as a, mm -hmm. uh, a youth. So I decided to get one or two courses to concentrate no radio presentation. You tell us much more. You did not only work for one media house that you told us that was uh, Top TV or Top Radio. From yeah. Top TV and Top Radio, I joined the NBS television as a sports presenter, and that's where I ended my career as a sports presenter and as a journalist. Mm. So these others, uh, we, I didn't go any other further with other media. Mm. Uh, media. I spent 15 years there. And I thought that was enough for me as a presenter. 
maybe I could go there as an analyst, as a guest, the way I come to NTV, the way I go to any other media, because mm -hmm. I have very, very, very good knowledge about sports in this country and even internationally. Then let's go back to transitioning from now the media mm. to politics. How yeah. did it happen? Historically, I had a small history of competing. Mm. I don't fear competition. And when I came into politics, um, I started by, uh, I was recruited in 2011, 2006 by Haji Nasa Antege Sebagala, Sebagala's camp. Then he was vying for, Lord, for mayorship. I was recruited as a younger man to be their secretary, administration mm. at their offices, then campaign offices at Ivory Plaza. So I could do, enter data into the computer, I could do, do budgeting and enter them in, the, in my computers and do so many things for them technically. So that's when I started realizing uh, the worth of politics, this political, not the other of the school. Mm -hmm. So due to, a, due to being a person who didn't fear competition and with that small story of engaging with those big men then, like Haji Nasa Sivagala, then he was the biggest political man in this country. Mm -hmm. He had a following and we, we, we were with him for such some, some, some years. And when I joined media, I got a name. So I combined both the small history and uh, the idea that I got while serving that secretariat with the current then, uh, the cloud I had got around myself mm -hmm. and I decided to come back home and contest for a political position as a councillor LOC5 uh, to go and serve at Kampala Capital City Authority then because I even had very many friends who had become councillors. What realities did you come across after joining politics? You have been elected as councillor. As a younger man, there are those who say, no, this one is very young. He could not manage the pressure which comes along with it, being in a position which is very political. So after being a councillor, you crossed over and mm. became member of parliament. Mm. Would you say that uh, your councillorship was so instrumental in seeing that you are voted to parliament? Yeah, of course, it was very historical. And uh, that's when I, 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 I made history in this country by standing for the truth. As a councillor, very young as I was, with all the challenges financially, so I stood by the side of the people uh, during the impeachment of the Lord Mayor. I remember that saga, it was very historical because uh, up to now people still remind me about it. Mm. And, uh, then, Is that the time we saw you jumping on the table? Yeah, jumping on the table, <laughs> mm. showing Ugandans that when you want something to be done, at least, and you know it is the truth, stand by it and it will be done as you, as, as you want it to be done. Do you regret that incident today as maybe you have children here? When they look at you, you think, it, it, is it embarrassing to you? No, it was a, for a very good cause. It is not embarrassing. It was for a very good cause. It was for the good of the country. It helped the city to maintain political leadership in the city. So I, 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 I even enjoy it and talk about it mm. even when they are there. And uh, they know that their father is very historical in the history of this camp, of the of Kampala Capital City Authority, especially in maintaining political leadership in the city.